here at Let It Roll for the title matches of the Arizona Invitational. Nick Devlin's got to be Cortez Shank twice. If anybody can do it, Nick can. A, because he's good. B, because he has had everything go right for him in match play for the last hour and a half or so. So well. He's running good, say, says our poker players right out in front of us here. And early on, they both look good on what's been an absolutely brutal pattern today. Check this out. The cut today was minus 143, something in that general area. Whatever it was, it was a roll-off between uh, Max and Paul, which Max won. But a lot of people, triple digits down, made the cut today. And both these guys have already caught a double here in what could be the title match. <laughs> Oh! Are you kidding me? Slings that messenger over. The 10 looked like it was going to fall without the messenger, and then neither thing happened. Both these bowlers have invitational wins this season, right? Tez out in Mojave and Nick over in New Mexico. In SoCal. The one in New Mexico. Yoder, that's right. So lots of big names gets to the title matches. It's no surprise. And in probably our grindiest format, you see the uh, cream rise to the top. Has of course, on top of most statistical charts we have, he's sitting on 76 career wins. Set the all-time season titles record with his last win. Wow. Ties up the match with that strike in the fourth. To their right are handicap matches. There's still four bowlers remaining. Mark Sove has two losses. On the camera there is big brother Philip only has one loss. Potter and Domagin, your two lost bowlers, they are playing. Lots of exciting matches, especially in scratch today. See what a small margin of error the bowlers have. We bowled on Alcatraz today. It started tough and got harder. Tug it a little, grab it a little, set it short a little. It's going left, miss right, and it's uh, five if you're lucky. Lots of 210 combos, lots of big five washouts. And whatever you do, you've got to make those spares. Most losses today were lost on missed spares, not on missed opportunities to strike. A low scoring pattern, that's really the name of the game. Nobody's going to string them big, very often at least. Somehow Joe Gronin managed to run the front 10 today. That was an exceptional run. He finished up just eliminated in the last month, in, in the last match in third. Running into both Devlin and a chair in the loss. So Nick could have, should have been out the last few matches in a row. Crowd calls for it to shim, it does, and that strike ties it up again through five. If Nick wins, they do it all over again. If Tez wins, it's over. Nick by all Nick got his second loss against Tez in match four, and then Nick should have been out of the tournament in game five, but Harley went, uh, it was a weird one, he went foul spare. No, that was Hatchet, that's a Hatch first, yeah, Harley had a different match, yes, Har uh, Harley went nine out, nine out against Nick to lose. Before that match, Harley was playing Hatchet, who went foul spare to make Eric double, and he got it, so there's been some wild back and forth between all these bowlers. And pretty shots there. Give a bowler as good as Nick this many second chances. So if it's your third second chance, it's not a second chance. I guess it's a fourth chance or something. I don't know, whatever. Both these bowlers look zoned in to a degree that most people haven't been all day long. They're just going flush, flush right now. It's a carry contest. Russ's giant head finished in fifth or sixth today. There we go, as you can tell. See Tez playing pretty deep inside, pretty slow ball speed actually. Getting the ball to cover a lot of boards and boy, two perfect shots right after Nick's two perfect shots. Real good stuff out of both of them. 
course, you don't win 76 titles by throwing imperfect shots, do you? So back and forth we go now, both bowlers working on doubles in a tie match. Nick, a 14-time champ, former bowler of the year up in the Northwest before coming down to school at ASU. Back and forth. I think we are in clinic territory here. Nick started out with a bad loss to Keith Fung. Yes, he did. Not that it was bad that he lost to Keith, I should clarify. <laughs> It was just a, he got blown out is what happens. That's all we meant. <laughs> Keith made the most of his day and that's all I will say for the record. <laughs> oh, oh turn? She was. <laughs> Two outstanding bowlers bowling their A game when it's clutch time. Thousand dollars for first, five hundred for second. So this is a five hundred dollar match potentially, and they're each bowling probably their best game of the day. Will it cover it? Wow! What a bad break for Tez. That messenger might have hit it if the other pin rolling around didn't kind of alter its uh, course there. Real good shot for only nine. <laughs> oh, Avery Domagin tripping a four over there. Avery has had a fantastic season over the handicap division for a little tight. It just doesn't matter, folks, big or small, young or old. You can be Solomon Salama or Russ Oviatt in scratch. You can be a Avery or Dante in handicap. It just doesn't matter. You all do and all are successful. Tess still very much in that in this match. He can pack out for 238. And that is the exact pace that Devlin's going at right now. It's nine spare strike the rest of the way. And Shank splits the 8-9 with that ball. Strike here and a mark and he wins. Marking out will force Tez to get at least two in the tenth, if not three. All this just to get the opportunity to do it all over again. My goodness gracious. Like I said, you have options, baby. You guys, if, if you're just watching this tape and this is the any, this is the only thing you know about this tournament, you'd think we just threw out house and let these guys wheel. It is so difficult to strike right now. It's difficult to control the pocket for any number of frames. Any mark and we play it again. Any open and Tesla have a chance to end it all right here. Cannot put the ball any better in the one three pocket. The only thing less than an almost perfect shot was Nick's fifth and Tez's first. Everything else could have struck. And I'm happy we're going to get to see more bowling because that was fun to watch right there. We'll regroup and see where we are in the handicap division. They might be in the final two as well. As in, unless you happened to bowl Joe in one game a couple hours ago, that would have swept the world. 260. Tez's 230 might well have won it. Any other match. Even the two team that he just spares for probably would have won, what, 90% of the matches. Great stuff. We'll see what happens the second time around for all the marbles.